Hello friends, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's current affairs video wherein you are definitely going to learn something new. Uh, guys, this is the timetable for our RPS Again Awards live courses. So if you really want to get yourself enrolled in any course for any of these examinations, then this is a really good option you can uh, look for. So do try it out, do uh, look at the demo videos, the teaching style and whatever is needed for you to have trust in us, do that guys. And then if you find it viable, then you can enroll in the courses. As far as the courses uh, benefits are concerned, so let me tell you that here you will get the interactive sessions, you will get the DAO class. So these are some of the benefits of the live courses. The, uh, this is our mobile application. <coughs> This is the number on which you can call us. Uh, this is our mail ID and this is our website. So let's quickly begin today's video. <coughs> so the first question is, recently <coughs> Niti Aayog, uh, in collaboration with the World Resource Institute India, launched India's first national electorate trade platform that is eFast India, supported by the World Economic Forum. The cat start and RMI India to support innovative trade solutions to increase the use of electric vehicles. What does S stand for in FAST? So here guys, S stands for So this is a new uh, platform. The platform is Freight Accelerator for Sustainable Transport. Now why have we launched this? platform basically to create to provide a platform for the creation of sustainable solutions so that electric vehicles can be used and their use can be promoted especially in the field of freight. Now I hope all of you are aware of the logistic cost which is approximately 16 to 18 percent of GDP. In India to grow its target is to reduce it to 10 percent Okay. So this is the target of the government, but there should be one question in your mind at this moment that why does the government want to reduce the share of logistics in the GDP? Even after uh, the high cost of logistics, the services provided by the transporters like the truck, uh, uh, the truck owners and the drivers who transport one good from another, uh, from one place to another place. So those services actually are benefiting in the GDP creation. Then why does the government want to reduce this share in the GDP? So here my friends, the clarity is that the government does not want to reduce the share of logistics in the overall GDP. By means of that, I want to say that the government does not aim to curtail the services provided by the logistics sector. However, the cost of the logistics are targeted to cut down because if the costs are higher then the manufacturers would prefer not be able to manufacture more goods and foreign investors would definitely not come in India to manufacture goods. So in order to boost the manufacturing sector the logistic cost would be reduced. Now this cost, the amount of this logistic cost is equivalent to the 16 to 18 percent of our GDP. The target of the government is to replace this, replace this cost with the production. There should be more and more production. The manufacturing sector should contribute a lot in the GDP instead of the logistic cost. So basically the basic idea behind this is to increase the manufacturing sector and reduce the logistics cost to approximately 10%. The next question is, Kibithu military station and road in Arunachal Pradesh has been named after India's first Chief of Defence Staff General Bipin Rawat on which river's bank is the station's valley located. So basically this station is located in a valley and that valley is located near a river. So which river is this? So the right answer is Lohit River. The name of the valley is Lohit Valley. And the state is Arunachal Pradesh. So very clear. But use it is, there is nothing much to this. Moving ahead. So here we have basic cabinet 
given is the vaccine of which disease bcg is the short form so it is the vaccine of tuberculosis now why exactly are we discussing about the vaccine of tuberculosis because the president dr murmu has launched the pradhan mantri ki ye mukt bharat abhiyan However, it is an anomaly that the president is launching the abhiyan, but the name starts from the Pradhan Mantri. But that is something to be ignored right now. So, Pradhan Mantri TB Mukt Bharat Abhiyan has been launched in order to speed up the TB elimination efforts in India because we have the target to eliminate TB by 2025. Therefore, this campaign has been launched. Now, under this campaign, additional patient support will be provided to the TB patients. Otherwise, how? Uh, is the government planning to accelerate the actions by providing the additional patient support? There is one more thing that the government aims to do, and that is to uh, push the corporate social responsibility activities in this sector. So here we have the public and the private sector coming together. If the government is able to push the corporate social responsibility activities by the companies. Especially in the TB elimination program, then it would be a win-win situation for both the sectors. The government will get the funding from the private sector as well as the private sector will get the opportunity to use its CSR funds. Now you have to tell me the threshold, the minimum requirement for undertaking the CSR activities like the turnover, the net worth, and your uh, the profit requirement for the companies to undertake the CSR activities as per the Companies Act of 2013. Coming back to this news, so apart from the campaign, Nixon 2.0 portal was also launched to provide different kinds of services like information information to the TB patients. Now one more thing that this idea, the campaign, was conceptualized by Anandi Bhai Patel, who is the governor of Uttar. So they do remember this part because this woman remains in the news uh, now. Of the... okay, so we are discussing about TB. Let's know certain basic facts about tuberculosis. I hope all of you are aware that it is a bacterial infection caused by Mycobacterium or uh, tuberculosis. This is the name of the bacteria which causes TB, and TB majorly affects your Lungs. However, it also affects different parts, different organs of the body, but major effect is on the lungs. So, I hope all of you are aware that TB can be spread through air. When the person who is infected by TB sneezes or spits, the the germs of the TB is spread in the air, and through those germs, the healthy person can also get infected. Therefore, it is always advisable to wear mask. In the public, because you never know the person standing beside you in the in a crowded metro would have TB, and if you are not wearing the mask, then you might catch the infection. We cannot hold the other person responsible, or we cannot uh, force the other person to wear mask. But our responsibility is in our our hands. So do that, guys. Okay. Now coming back to this uh, TB thing, this vaccine candidate urine is the vaccine. Okay, now such standard static facts are often asked in the examination, and if you have not noticed, I have made the question on the vaccine itself, not on the campaign, not on the portal, but the vaccine. So such background information is important for you to know. There are certain more facts that you need to focus on. First of all, TB burden. In. So India has the world's highest. TB burden. If you talk about malaria, then also India is among the eleven uh, high burden to high impact countries. So these eleven countries have the highest burden of malaria in the world. India, as far as TB is concerned, is also sharing the highest burden in the world. And both of these diseases are preventable. Secondly, India is the world's approximately the most populous country by now, and we are the fastest growing economy. So is it viable for us to let the people? Die because of TB or malaria, the diseases which are preventable, which can be prevented. Guys, this is not viable and not morally right. So, what can we do here? We can increase the access to the healthcare services, increase the vaccination of these two diseases, plus sanitation, guys, because the bacteria is 
the bacteria is bred in the unhygienic environment and if we want to uh, remove this disease or eliminate this disease we need to keep our surroundings clean so as far as the tb burden in india is concerned 26 lakh people contract tb approximately every year and 4 lakh die because of this so this is a huge tragic fact okay so as far as 2020's data is concerned, 1.5 million people died from TB uh, and estimated 10 million people fell ill with TB for a month, okay? So initially I also got shocked when I read this, 1.5 million people, but it is worldwide, not India, okay? Worldwide. Now what are the initiatives that India has taken to eliminate TB? First of all, do remember the target that is 2025 because there was a question in your award where different diseases were given and the year of elimination, the targeted year was given. So do remember such targets. As far as TB is concerned, 2025 is the target. We have an Mitra initiative under which the Mitra is the donor, the individual or the company who wants to adopt a facility, healthcare facility. Now what do we mean by adoption? By, uh, by adoption we mean providing the financial funding, financial support to that healthcare facility because government is lacking or is falling short on the funding. Therefore, we need the private sector to step in and uh, undertake this activity. Okay. Next is Nixia Digital Portal and this is the community support portal for the persons with TB and its revamped version that is Nixia Portal 2.0 has been launched. Nixia Portion Yojana, so it provides rupees 500 to the patients of TB through the direct benefit transfer so that they can uh, buy the medicines and whatever is needed for themselves. Okay. Next is National TB Elimination Program 2017-25, which aims to eliminate TB by 2025. Then we have TB Harega Desh Dikera Campaign, which aims to expand the reach of the TV care services across the country by the end of 2022. So it is also important for you to know. However, you have no exam coming up except for NABARS phase 2, where this question can be asked from you. But except for that, you have no exam coming up in the months coming. So uh, even that, even after that, you need to remember this fact that 2022 is the target of this TV Harikal based Chitika campaign because it is a government initiative. And the targets and you know, whatever is mentioned in the government initiatives are uh, important. The next is Aishman Bharat Digital Health Missions. Under this mission, there would be a specific health ID that would be provided to the TB patients so that we can support them and provide them with the healthier services. That is the way. If we are talking about India's initiative, India's target to eliminate TB, why not we talk about human? So UN has the target to end TB by 2030. It's a very easy target to remember because 2030 is the SDG's goal as well. And India has shifted its target five years ahead of UN's target. Okay, so 2030 is UN's target. Now, what does UN or WHO aim to do? Then it says that we are going to end the TB. So here we have the milestones. And these milestones, my friends, are important for all of you to remember. Okay? So, as far as the number of TB deaths are concerned, as compared to 2015, the UN aims to reduce it by 35% by 2020, 2025, 75%, 2030, 90% reduction should be there, and 2035, 95% reduction. So, we are not talking about reducing or putting the number of TB deaths to zero. We are talking to reduce it by 90 percent. Then reduction in TB incidence rate as compared to 2050. So 20 percent, 50 percent by 2025, 80 percent by 2030, and 2035, 90 percent. Okay. So what does it show? That the TB cases should be less than 20 per 1 lakh cases. Okay, per 1 lakh population. TB affected families facing catastrophic cost due to TB. Okay, so this is the out of pocket expenditure that the families have to bear if a person is chronically ill because the health facilities are so expensive, and this is the case in India as well. 
However, the picture is improving to a little extent because now we have the government facilities which is provided free of cost. But still, there is the sanitation problem that is there in the government hospitals that needs to improve plus the staff attitude needs to improve. So all of these uh, loopholes are there in the government services. So that needs to improve. If that improves, then obviously we will have a lot of healthcare facilities with us. So there should not be the catastrophic cost, the out-of-pocket expenditure on TV should be reduced to zero in all the years. However, it has not happened so far. Okay? So these are the targets. targets. Please remember these targets because these are WHO's targets and can be asked from you. At least the 2031 is at most important. Moving to the next question. On which river is the Gayaji Dam built? So this build has been built on the Pandu River in Bihar. So Gaya is the place in Bihar. <laughs> India's longest rubber dam. What do we mean by rubber dam? So, but as you can understand it from its name itself, rubber dam, it is actually made up of rubber. Concrete was not used to create this dam, it was made of rubber. That is why it is called as such, and it is India's longest. Do remember this fact. India's longest rubber dam, rubber dam is in Bihar on Sadhu River, known as the Gaya Chitra. These facts are true. Because that is a static fact. Until or unless we have a new longest rubber dam in India, this remains the static general. The next question is, where did the Gagan strike take place? So this is an exercise between Indian Army and Indian Air Force and it was held in Punjab. Nothing much to discuss here, a simple exercise took place. The next question is, recently Project 17A, third stealth project Taragiri has been launched by Mazagon. Uh, Dog Shipyard Limited in Mumbai. Project 17A Frigate, also known as Nilgiri Class Guided Missile Frigate, aims to develop seven ships, four at MDL and three at Garden Beach Shipyards and Engineers, Shipbuilders and Engineers. What is the total outlay of this indigenization project? So, we are talking about the total outlay of Project 17A. So, the total outlay is rupees 50,000 crores. So, in this manner also you can expect question in your exam. So, let's discuss the new grid. So, guys, this is the Taragiri ship, which is a stealth frigate. Now, what is the stealth frigate and how is it different from a naval ship? This is entirely dependent on your curiosity. If you want to know about it, you can do that. From exam point of view, it is not at all important and from general awareness also, it is not very significant because you are not a defense expert. Now coming back to this news, understand this one that Mizabon, Dog Shipyard Limited has developed it and it is going to commission in 2023. That is launching is different and commissioning is different. When a ship is launched, that means the Navy has taken the responsibility of that ship to undertake the test. Okay, the trials of the ship and commissioning means that the ship has become operational, has become an operational part of the Indian Navy fleet. Okay, so it has not been commissioned, it has been just launched. So it trials the home. Now let's discuss more on the more about the project 17A. So A stands for stealth. Okay, now why do we call them military class stealth stealth project? Because the first project that was developed under the project 17A was named as Nilgiri. Okay, therefore these projects are called as Nilgiri class stealth project. Okay, and the second one is Uday. Okay, these two are the projects. Total budget of the project is 50,000 crore. A total of seven projects will be developed. Four will be developed by the Nazagon Document Limited and three will be developed by the GIS. So these are some of the facts from this project is uh, I would say a static project, okay? So do remember this information about the project 17. Eh, because indigenization is one of the areas where, where the government is focusing more and more and it is trying really hard to indigenize the defense products, okay? Um, as far as the Nilgiri and Udairi are concerned, so you can clearly see that Nilgiri was launched in 2019, 
but it will be commissioned by the end of 2020. Then Udaipur was launched in May 2022, but it will be commissioned in 2024 because sea trials will take place. The next question is, uh, which company has been awarded the patent for the design and manufacturing of its single piece 3D printed rocket engine? So here, Agnikul Cosmos is the right. Now I hope all of you are aware of what 3D printing is. If you, if not, then please do search about it. What 3D printing is because Niti Aayog has also released its national policy on active printing, and it is the new area. the booming technology that is also being used in the healthcare that is being used in the construction so 3d printing is being used to create houses and 3d printing is also being used to create the organs so how is it helping in different different fields while on the one hand we have healthcare on the other hand we have construction entirely different fields but the same technology is being applied on both the fields so how is it happening this is your homework guys do search about the 3d printing and what are the pros and cons of it okay it's very interesting to read so as far as this is concerned so single piece 3d printed rocket engine which would be named as agni led so very easy to associate this engine with the company agni led is the engine agni cool is the company so it has developed this 3d printed rocket now um Agni led was designed and manufactured in India. It was test fired, uh, test fired in early 2021. Right now, what has happened that patent for this design has been awarded to this company. Okay. One more important information is that Agni Cool has established India's first rocket facility dedicated to 3D 3D printing, named as Rocket Factory One at the IIT Madras Research Park. So this is a very important fact and is relevant for your. exams as well okay so basically in 3d printing i am giving you a very brief idea about it what do we do in 3d printing we just create the entire structure in the 3d model length breadth and height all of it is there so we create the structure uh, by using the machine okay for example if we have to create a house a miniature house so what do we do we will put the metal into that and that machine will create the entire structure of the House. that is 3d printing so basically the engines will be created by using the 3d printed machine and what are the cons and pros of it this is your homework which you have to do the next question is which company has launched smart flexi protect solution a 3 in 1 solution for providing health and enhanced life cover along with market linked investment returns so here max life insurance company is the right answer And there is nothing much to this. It's a very simple, innovative product. Max Life Insurance Company has launched for it. The next question is: Secretary General Antonio uh, Guterres has appointed Walter Turk as the next UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. Which country does he belong? So he belongs to Austria. Okay. So he's the next Human Rights Commissioner. And uh, he belongs to austria the head the headquarters of this uh, un high commissioner for human rights council is located in geneva and new york both geneva switzerland new york us the last question of the day is which country has collaborated with the united nations economic and social commission for asia and the pacific to organize the first ever global south south development expo on the theme of advancing south south and triangular cooperation for sustainable covid 19 recovery towards a smart and resilient future so here guys thailand is the right now on september 12 we celebrated international day for south south cooperation there was no theme of this day okay and on the occasion of that day thailand government partnered with even people saw to sorry human economic and social commission for east asia and plus to organize this first ever expo okay on this theme now what is the start of i hope the picture is clear <laughs> if you look at the global south the natural south then it would start from this point okay from the equator 
that is not further hemisphere. But if we undertake or consider the inequality in the world, then this line marks the global south. Okay. So here you can see China has also been put into this global south and many more countries. Entire Africa and Middle East is there in the in this global south, then the Latin America, Mexico, every country is there in the global south. Only the colonizers are there in the global south. Okay. So what do we mean by global south? Global south is uh, the group of the countries which are uh, lacking in development, which are either least developed or in the developing stage. Therefore, you can find India and China in the picture okay, in the global south as well. You have Singapore as well. So, developing countries as well as least developed countries. So, in the south south region, the developing countries help the least developed countries in their various projects. Whereas, in the triangular cooperation, these two countries collaborate with a North Hemisphere country or a country which is developed. Okay, for example, if a project is undertaken by UK, okay, this is UK. So UK has collaborated with India to launch or to operate a solar power project in uh, you can say in any of these countries. Um, okay. Let's say Yemen. Okay, so this would be guys triangular cooperation. Because here one north country and two south countries are collaborating for the development of a least developed country or the developing country, whichever uh, is the needy part here. Okay, I hope you are understanding the south south and the triangular cooperation. Now, in order to uh, standardize this entire thing, the UN Office for South South Cooperation was established in 1974 and it is presently housed at the UN Development Program in New York. Okay? So it operates from the UN Office. So here guys this video ends. I hope you have enjoyed the video and if you have any feedback or anything you can mention it in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching the video.